I had my first camera when I was still living in Jamaica, I was age 10, in one of the many parcels that our parents would send us on birthdays, Christmas and so on, I received a camera. I was intrigued as to how this technology worked. When I was very young in kindergarten, I'd heard the story about the Morant Bay Rebellion, which took place in 1865, and it was literally in my neighborhood. I heard about its impact on the people um, in the community, and I remember hearing of these people hiding in caves from the British. At the time, I thought to myself, I'd love to find one of these caves and see what they might have left behind. My interest in that idea of collecting the past or seeing what has happened prior to me um, was born. In this first photograph was taken the morning after the riots and this was on Los Elves Road where just outside the Villa Cross Cinema I saw a fire and the firemen came and so on and subsequently some people were throwing stones at the firemen, the police came and then after that the crowd moved on to Los Elves Road. This is the result of it. But I think while we all have a story, we're not all storytellers. Us as a people being persecuted in many ways and what I saw written about in the papers was quite negative and it wasn't the life and experience that I was having or seeing reflected of the community. So I thought I would document um, their life story. And this is Nine Night on the ninth night of a person dying. A big shindig, the people get together and eat, drink, cook um, and celebrate the life of the person. A group of men are singing from the Bible. They're doing what we call tracking. The man seated with the Bible, he recites a line from the Bible and the others would sing it. In this case, it's a morning. It was my grandmother. My parents here in England and as kids, we would hear stories, we'd have the, basically eavesdrop on conversation when they receive a letter as to what is happening here. And we hear about snow, fog, um, you know, factories and all sorts of things. So then um, I was quite intrigued as to what life was like here. This is Mrs. Walker in her hairdressing shop. And what they would do is a paraffin stove. They would put the hot comb on it, which they'd use to straighten the hair. But occasionally they would get a little nick on the top of the hair with the ears with a hot comb. And you could always see that, you know, um, telltale sign. This is a young man at his birthday party in the 60s Hatfield Road, typical of the single room lodging that was quite popular at the time as people struggled to establish themselves here. And you can see there the type in paper, so that this person would have been learning to type. I particularly like all the details and things, you know, the, the cups and saucer on top of the, the Bible and the television aerial. I don't know if you remember those, you used to have to walk with them till you get a good reception point and Not then you could walk. Oh, you, 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 you got to do that one. I felt I was in a particularly unique position. All history has a starting point. And imagine if I was around at the beginning of the Roman Empire, you know, what would be? And I thought, well, this is no different in a way. It is about movement of people. And I thought, well, 
you know, our history as a starting point, and for me, it's, it's now. Here we have a church, and I particularly use one church, Austin Road Church. We have the preacher. I'm not sure if it was a convention service, but it was a special occasion. Guests from other churches were invited, you know, to take part in the service. The band is playing, the choir is singing, and some of these people are still around. I decided that I would stick to one city. I felt I could do justice to them then. And this is the sound clash, which is where two sound systems meet and they decide who sounds the best. And they would have speakers, which was described as the size of a double wardrobe, 1,000 watt speakers. The Sunday Times did an article on, on the sound system one day and they said, well, you don't dance in the room where this music is being played you get shuffled around by the vibration <laughs> that is taking place at the time. The photographs are chronological representation of the images that I've taken over the years, starting in its earliest point. You'll hear through the grapevine what's happening, you know, demonstration or baptism, and you just try and make yourself available to, to, to photograph them. There were a lot of demonstrations in the 70s, 80s around racism in the National Front and so on. Wherever they chose to have a meeting, you'd have a group of people protesting against it as rightly so. Mm -hmm. And here in West Bromwich, they were having a meeting at a school hall and um, a group of people turned up to oppose this. There wasn't always a lot of Asians and, and, and African Caribbean at these, these places. But what I love about this one as well, if you look here, mm -hmm. um, there's an Asian policeman. Mm -hmm. And you see there's this turban uh -huh. here as well on either side. There are quite a few Asian yeah. people, but I just like the turbans yeah. in this case. This one is a day trip to the seaside where a coach was hired. Food was placed in the, of the trunk. It would be a huge pot of curry goat mm -hmm. and rice. But what's interesting about this one is everyone would, would cook and they would bring food and they would share. Everyone would be fed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The catalogue is from an exhibition the title by the Rivers of Birmingham. The title was by Eddie Chambers, um, who wrote in the catalogue. It was curated by Linda Morris. The book consists of 100 photographs. I decided that I would present the photographs in Handsworth itself. I just felt the need to, photograph, to show the people who had photographed the photographs themselves. Not that I was asking them to change the photographs, but I think it's important to see how I represented them. This one is uh, Shabin. It's a place where people go to eat, for people to sit and meet. So I think they serve a vital part of the place within the community, really. For me, this lamp, prior to this one, we had the paraffin lamp. And again, that played a vital role in our lives. This is a young man at African Liberation Day, which was organized by the PACM. An African Congress movement, and he's a speaker from Zimbabwe. They would hire school halls because very few of these people own places for you know large enough to take the crowd. On this occasion, it was at Hollyhead School. People would come from America, the Liberation Movement, and the Caribbean, and again, uh, there's an international. Then you'd find people from different cities around Britain would come. This is a group of Rasta women protesting outside a hairdresser's in Peribar, where it was alleged a young black girl was raped by a group of men in a sort of a wig shop hairdressing. At the speech, you know, people were protesting and you know, the, the question was, um, why do you need to extend your hair with wigs and things like that? Why don't you go natural? Why do you have to imitate hair? And quite a few of the women, they pulled their wig off their head and they threw it in the crowd that was on the pavement. And it was, it seems quite a strong statement to have hair burning on the streets. Yeah. And history is a process for existence and it will be written whether we participate or not. And I think therefore it was imperative that we as a people write our own history. Thank you.